Hello, um, my name is Richard. I'm going to talk about angels. So um, I've been doing some study on the subject of angels over this last week. Um, I've been teaching a course on the book of Hebrews, um, which is a great book in the New Testament. And in the beginning of Hebrews, it talks about uh, angels. And it says that angels are ministering spirits or flames of fire is another translation. So the ministering spirits sent to help those who will inherit salvation. So um, angels are around us to help us. Um, so many people believe they've seen angels and they've met angels or had experiences of feeling angels. Um, I know people that have um, felt angels around them um, in times of intense trouble or in car crashes or in near car crashes where they felt a force if you will come over their hands and push them away from danger and when they look back at the situation they remember and they feel that you know that it was supernatural everything seemed to go a bit slower in time and they felt a, a hand come over their steering wheel or a force push the car away from trouble. So this is probably angels when, when people have these experiences. Um, it can be God himself pushing us and helping us. Um, but I do think um, angels are very active in our world today. I don't think angels have gone anywhere from when we read about them in the Old Testament and when we read about angels in the New Testament. Um, so in the, in the scriptures, angels are incredibly active. Um, it's one of those subjects that when you start to research and read, there's more and more and more stories in the Bible. So where do angels come from? Uh, that's a really good question. I think if we go back to Genesis 1, uh, the word says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the universe. So I think that's where angels were created. They are created beings. They are creating spirits. Um, they have angelic bodies because every now and then people see them and the people in the Bible saw them too. Um, and they talk about, you know, a man standing there and, and his face was like lightning. Um, so very often people who see angels get very scared. I mean, it's, it's supernatural. It's something outside of the realm of normality or visual normality. I think because we have human spirits, that's a part of me, that's a spirit, uh, it's human spirit, I think we pick up things spiritually and so we can sense spiritual things so they do seem to have bodies because if we look at say Mary uh, who met the angel Gabriel um, you know she was you know taken aback and, and fearful um, and most people when they meet an angel in the Bible they are terrified um, there's there's a story of Daniel who meets an angel and he's the only one that sees the angel but everyone around him is filled with a terror that's what the word says and Daniel saw the angel face to face but the other people didn't see the angel but they felt the terror <laughs> of the angelic being and they wanted to hide themselves but they didn't see the angel so it is interesting how I believe God opens our eyes to see the angelic and we do have other stories in the Old Testament uh, where I think it was Elijah and his servant and Elijah prays open the eyes of my servant so he, so that he can see uh, the forces of good around us and God answered Elijah's prayer and 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 the servant saw all the angels around it's like wow all these all the army and chariots of God are around us um, so Every now and then, God does allow people to see angels. Personally, I feel that um, we sense angels a lot more than we see them. 
Um, and I think that must be for our benefit. God doesn't want us worshipping angels because they're very powerful. Um, he wants us worshipping him and I think our natural desire is a little bit to worship amazing things. And so God, God every now and then allows people to see angels in their glory. Okay, so we know they're created beings. Um, God created them. We, we do have references in uh, the book of Revelation that a third of the angels fell. And we, you know, culturally people understand fallen angel or kind of thinking like that, even, even in our culture around us. So when the devil rebelled, he is a created angel. Um, and we get that again from the scriptures. So the devil is a created angel who had pride in his heart and the scripture tells us that he wanted to be like God and he, he tried to be like God. That's pride and that was the first sin and he was cast out of heaven for his rebellion against God and in Revelations it does tell us that he took a third of the angels with him. So there's two-thirds left who did not rebel, and that's the angels I'm talking about right, right now. I would call them the holy angels. They're the angels that do God's work. They go, yes, sir, and they go and do whatever God tells them to do, literally. They will, they will speak God's word, um, and they will do exactly what God instructs that angel to do. They can have great power, great authority. Um, where's another example of an angel? Well, with Zechariah, who was the father of John, the baptizer. You know, he was told, you will have, the angel told John that you will have a child and you shall call him John. And Zechariah um, didn't believe the angel. And the angel said, well, because you don't believe me, you will not be able to speak until your child is born. So for nine months, John lost the power, uh, sorry, Zechariah lost the power of speech. So angels have authority to carry out God's work. And I'll finish with one last story on angels. And, uh, you know, if you come to my Bible study on Sunday night, this Sunday, um, and I'll put the details in the comments about the Bible study, we will be teaching, I'll be teaching on angels, and we will be looking at angels. Maybe you can bring a story of angels in your life. Um, I certainly have experiences of meeting people in uh, South America, in Bolivia, who helped me, who looking back afterwards probably were angels helping me in times of great stress and trial. Um, but maybe I'll talk about them on Sunday. But the last story I want to talk about uh, with angels is, is angels in, in the role of believers today. If we look at Acts chapter 8, we see that um, that angels helped Philip. Um, I think it's Philip. Let me get my story right. Yes, Philip. An angel calls Philip to go and preach to a eunuch uh, in Africa or, or on his way to Africa. And uh, Billy Graham in his book about angels makes a very good point, And that is that he surmises that angels don't usually teach the gospel or preach the good news. That's up to mankind to do that. But angels position us as humans to do and preach the good news. And that's, I thought that was very good observation by Billy Graham. So in the example in Acts 8, an angel appears to Philip and says, you need to go and preach to this man uh, who, who's the eunuch. And, and so the angel gets Philip to where the eunuch is and then uh, Philip expounds the scriptures to this eunuch, tells this eunuch about God, tells him about Jesus and that eunuch then believes and, and understands the scriptures and Philip tells him the story of the good news and, and the, um, the eunuch is saved and gets baptized and at that very moment um, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit took Philip away <laughs> however that happens how God moves people um, but he does he moves Philip immediately so that's an interesting story that angels help us position us into places where we can share the gospel to someone so if we take that example 
to, for our world today. It shouldn't therefore surprise us that angels will help um, believers in Messiah to get in positions where they are able to share the good news. And so um, I think angels do that very much, very often. We find ourselves in positions where we can share about God to someone, whether it's on a bus or at a dinner party or in the streets or at work. And I think that's where angels work often. They, they want mankind to be saved. They're cheering us on, we're told. The angels in heaven are, whoa, come on, you can do it. Um, so we get glimpses. So that's probably enough little teaching for, for a Facebook thing. So, you know, come and join me, Richard Martin, uh, this Sunday, what is it, September the 17th, I believe, at Restoration Community Church here in Raleigh. And we will have an hour plus talking about angels. Bring your story about angels and we'll share some stories on, on our experiences of angels. And, and possibly demons, um, the opposite to angels, the fallen angels. But we will, we will turn our eyes to our risen Lord Jesus Christ and look to him um, for answers to this amazing subject of angels. So come and join me this Sunday. Um, I look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Bye-bye.